Alfred Morris had certainly had a weird career up until this point. Back in 2012, when he was with RG3 in his rookie season, he rushed for 1,613 yards and 13 touchdowns. He was a huge part of that RG3 system, and even the next season, he still rushed for 1,275 yards. And even his third season, he rushed for over 1,000, but the production has definitely declined since then. In 2016, he rushed for 243 yards, and then since then, his high in rushing yards has been 547, so he's far from a premier back at this point. So why am I still interested in this signing? Well, actually, if you look at his yards per carry, in 2017, it was 4.8, which is actually the same it was when he rushed for 1,600 yards. It was 4.8 that season as well. It just so happens that he got three times as many carries. So I think there's still some talent in Alfred Morris. He's never going to rush for 1,600 yards again, but I definitely think that this could be a solid pickup, especially with Zeke holding out. You never know what happens, especially after that Le'Veon Bell situation. You always want to be prepared, and Morris can definitely be a very solid backup plan. And not just that, but he can be a very solid backup. And so let's get into what makes Alfred Morris good. So let's jump into it with this play from last season when he was with San Francisco. And it should be mentioned that San Francisco and Dallas do have relatively different schemes. San Francisco runs a lot of outside zone scheme. And here's how a typical play would work for San Francisco. First, they're just going to have three one-on-one -on -one matchups on that left side of the screen. And they're also going to pull the fullback over to block that linebacker right there. And then Morris is going to run to the outside. And basically, he's in charge of making a decision here. He's in charge of finding a hole that he feels like he wants to run through and then running through that hole. And as you see, there's definitely is a gap right over there. It's actually a lot closer to the inside than you would typically expect on a play like this, but that's what's going on. That's the gap that he should run through. I mean, if you look at the Rams player on the edge, he's very far over to the left side of the screen, so running in that direction would just be a bad idea. So again, pretty simple. Morris sees what's going on, makes the right read, runs through the middle, and is able to pick up some yards in a solid game. So there you go. You did your job, and I would probably get tackled by that player who I have in the box, but hey, you did your job, and that's what matters. But not just that. Morris is able to actually get around that Ram and run for a huge gain. I mean, oftentimes in football, that's all it takes. One broken tackle can turn a 10, 15 yard gain into a 40, 45 yard gain. And you know, I like that play for two reasons. For one reason, he actually made the right read and he did the right thing on that one. Personally, you would take a running back who's going to more consistently just pick up more yards than a guy who maybe has a home run hitting ability. But he put himself in the ability to hit that home run by getting up to that second level very quickly. He read the play, put himself in a position where he could break a tackle, and then once he did break that tackle, that's how he was able to pick up a huge game. This one's going to be another interesting one where it's going to be a run through the right side of the screen and again it's all one-on-one -on -one matchups right over there. So Morris basically has two options. On a play like this basically your read is going to be as far over to the side of the screen that you're going to be running the ball to and you're going to make the decision in either of those two gaps right there. Either all the way around to the outside or just in between that edge rusher who's going to be all the way on the right side. That's where you're going to run this ball. That's the decision for Morris to make and let's take a look at this play once he actually has to make this decision. So at first if you see because of that block right there he might try to take it to the outside see if he can turn the corner and pick up a huge game. That might be a good idea. However, of course, the problem with that would be that Ram who's right over there, who's definitely further over to the right side of the screen. So Morris is going to see this, but he's going to see it at the very last second. He tries to get to the inside, but it's just, it's kind of a clunky move, and he does end up running into his own player a little bit. So it just, it didn't work out exactly seamlessly. But you know what? He still made the right decision. Even though he did run into his own player, and even though it didn't work out exactly perfectly, so you'd rather take more of an awkward play that gets more yards than just a seamless play that gets less yards. And again, I should just make clear, when I'm pausing this play every couple of seconds, you were able to easily see, oh, okay, I see what's going on. He shouldn't run it in that direction. It's a lot easier when the play is paused than when it's playing out in real time. You have just a split second to make these decisions, but Morris can make these split second decisions pretty easily. And he also has the ability to get through the hole that he has to get through very quickly as well. That is definitely something Morris can do. Like on this one, what's going to happen is First things first, it's just going to be all one-on-one -on -one matchups. All across the board, it's just one-on-one -on -one matchups. So for Morris, he's basically just going to wait and see when a gap does open up and then try to run it through that gap. It doesn't really matter which gap, he just has to get through a gap. And as you see, once this handoff is happening, there definitely is a gap for Morris to get through right over there. But what I like about Morris is watch how quickly he's going to run through that gap. Watch how quickly he not just realizes it, but also just gets through the gap itself. It's good acceleration and good awareness, and he's able to move up to that second level before getting tackled by defensive backs. You know, one thing that has to be mentioned with Morris is the receiving game. I mean, this guy has never been a dominant receiving halfback. That's just not something that's in his game. I mean, he has 474 career rushing yards in his seven-year career. Now, granted, and a percentage of that was just because playing with RG3, you're just not going to have the ball come to you too often simply because that's not their system. But even with that, he's just not the type of guy that's going to be getting a lot of receiving yards. That's just not his style. He's not a pass-catching halfback. 
But that doesn't mean that he can't. I mean, when it's required for him to make a catch, he absolutely can. He absolutely is the type of guy that can run a route. And this play will be an example of that. So at first, it's going to be play action. But of course, after play action, you don't want to just hang around and do nothing. You usually will do one of two things. Either block or run a route. And here, Morris is going to run a route. And he's going to run down to the flat on the bottom half of the screen. And so what you'll see once this play starts is nothing really too fancy. I mean, Morris is going to kind of get open here. So that's good. Arizona is clearly worried about other things right now. Morris is open, but what I like about Morris is look at how he realizes what's going on and doesn't really do anything too fancy at all. He's going to see he's open, so he kind of just stops and just stares at his quarterback and waits for a throw to come his way. I think most people will tell you when you're running a route, you always want to keep moving. You never want to stop. But hey, if you're open and you're a check down, sometimes stopping is actually exactly what you should do. I think it's kind of human nature to continue moving just because you already are moving. But hey, if you're just going to move away from being open, then that's obviously a bad idea. It's a good play by Moore. So he kind of got himself in better positioning, but was looking at the quarterback all the way and was ready for a throw that entire time. He's not going to be able to run routes like Le'Veon Bell is. He just isn't. But at least he could be effective in a passing game one necessary. And so that's kind of where he was last year. I wanted to show those plays to kind of just let you know where he left off. But I also figured, hey, why don't we show how Morris can fit in that Cowboy system? And there's no better way of showing that than showing him actually playing in the Cowboy system from 2017 when he was playing for them. It was a lot of things like this that the Cowboys boys would do. First, they're going to have their center and right guard double team that redskin right over there. Also worth noting, their center, Travis Frederick, is going to be returning next season in 2019 after missing the entire 2018 season due to an illness. And if you're looking for more offensive line videos, I know some people love offensive line videos, I will be making a Travis Frederick video. It'll probably come out tomorrow, so look forward to that if that's something you're interested in. It'll either be tomorrow or in a couple days, but definitely in the next couple days it'll be out. But anyways, after that, what they're going to do is have their left tackle and left guard both move out to block those two Redskins right there, and these are tough blocks for offensive linemen to make. You have to be moving over, and you have to try to make this block, and the chances are the Redskins are going to be able to push over to the left side of the screens, so you kind of just have to hope that your right guard and center can move over the interior linemen far enough that then Morris can then run through. It's a tough play to make, and as you see, well, for one thing, yes, Travis Frederick did do a very good job of moving over that interior lineman to give Morris a hole, but again, it's a tough play. Both of those Redskins are now in the area, so this is not going to be an easy play for Morris to get through, but watch how it kind of just falls forward here. He doesn't get cleanly through, but he still picks up a solid gain just by running hard and just by falling forward. That's really important to do in the NFL level. It really is, and that is something that Morris still can do. Like, here's another somewhat similar example. Pretty much the same thing is going to happen. Once again, the center and right guard double team that interior lineman, and then once again, the left guard and tackle each have kind of awkward blocks to block those two redskins right there. And what you'll see once this play develops is that first, it looks like there is going to be a wide open hole. However, the problem is that Washington Redskin right there, number 90, can easily move over to the left side of the screen and sort of clog up that gap. So for Morris, watch what he does. He kind of thinks he's always going that way, but then moves over to the left and is sort of able to just juke him out. And now he's in much better positioning. He picked up some more yards, maybe not a lot more, but it's some more yards. And now look at all the Redskins who are around him. But he still somehow slips out of that and almost gets a touchdown out of it, although he does end up getting brought down. He was close there, and didn't quite get it done, but was still able to pick up a solid gain, and it just goes to show that this guy is a talented player, and he does fit into the Cowboys system well. But of course, that's not the only way that Morris can be successful, that's not the only types of runs that the Cowboys run, there will also be plays like this, where really the key Redskin to watch is going to be that Redskins edge rusher right over there on the left side of the screen. You know, oftentimes if you have a tight end in the game, you would often expect that tight end to be the guy who's in charge of blocking the edge rusher. And worth mentioning, that's Kerrigan, who is definitely far from a scrub, he's one of the better edge rushers in the league. But instead what they're going to do is actually pull the tight end who's all the way over to the right side of the screen over to block Kerrigan. And the reason why that's so key is because take a look at what's going to end up happening. First things first, Morris is going to have to move up to make sure he avoids Kerrigan as you see right there. He does that well, but now he has to run over to the left side of the screen. But he's also going to have to do it quickly enough because of that red skin right there. If it takes too long, the defender could actually get over to the right side of his assigned man and potentially make a tackle on Morris or at least slow him down enough that somebody else can run over and make a tackle for a loss. But watch Morris's foot work there. Watch how it kind of dances back and forth and is able to pick up a positive gain on that one. That might be the one major selling point in Morris. He's maybe not elite at anything, but he's good at pretty much everything. He's a back without too many weaknesses. I mean, obviously, the receiving game is definitely a weakness as a whole, but that is something he can still be somewhat effective at. And when you throw on the fact that there's pretty much no other flaw in his game, that's what makes him a valuable asset, especially as a backup. One more play, and this is going to be a run to the right side of the screen, so what you are going to see is a right guard and right tackle, both double-teaming that 
that interior lineman right over there and also their tight end over there will then make sure he's blocking the redskin over there and also there'll be a tight end with a one-on-one -on -one matchup and then in theory the right tackle can move off that block move over and block a redskin that's the way this play is hopefully going to work for dallas however one problem happens when that interior lineman does a very good job of kind of taking on that double team and now the linebacker who was supposed to be getting blocked by a right tackle is going to be completely unblocked and if you take a look one second later i mean yeah clearly there is a gap for morris to run through but the problem is there's a redskin right at the end of that gap and the problem for morris is there isn't really any way for him to go if he breaks to the right side of the screen someone could easily make a tackle there is a redskin right in that area but if it breaks to the left side of the screen, while everyone is currently getting blocked, there would just be too long of that to happen and someone would eventually get off their block and make a tackle. So what does he do? Well, he just runs straight forward and ends up actually breaking that tackle before finally getting brought down after a solid game. You know, plays like that, that's what you ask of a running back. Oftentimes people think that a running back is good just because of how many yards per carry they have or how many yards total they have. But honestly, a lot of that is offensive line and just having an effective offense as a whole. Of course, if you're passing the ball well, that'll draw more nickel coverages, that'll draw more dime coverages, and it'll also get the linebackers kind of a little bit more timid in the running game, try to get a little bit back and try to stop the pass. And obviously, having a good offensive line helps the running game. I don't think I need to explain that one. I've always felt like Morris is pretty underrated, and I think the Cowboys bringing him back could definitely be a good move for next season.